How are we doing? I think we will make it to the unit test. We might even go further than that. We'll find out. Decompose figures to find area. So some more practice on this, except this time we don't get, at least in this case, we don't get a, um, a diagram. We've got a first rectangle with a length of three and a width uh, of five. So, and by the way, length and width are interchangeable. doesn't matter which is which. It's just names. Names are important, but some of them are interchangeable. Um, so three by five is 15. The second rectangle is seven by four, which is 28, seven times four. Uh, 15 and 28, uh, let's see, 15 and 30 would be 45, minus two would be 43. I think the combined area is 43 square meters. If you're not sure what I'm doing when I talk about my mental math like that, um, do go back and look at my earlier videos. I, I do in very exhaustive detail talk about the many, many, many ways that you can break down numbers in your head uh, to do simple arithmetic. And I think it's a good lesson no matter what your age is. What's the area of this figure? Well, this is actually kind of a tough one because not all the information is obvious. I'm going to split it down like this. And this rectangle is easy. 7 by 3 is 21. But what about this one? This is a point where a student might go, oh, I don't know how to do this, and then shut down. And that's what we're trying to really push against in Common Core. We're trying to get students to see, oh, wait a second, what is the width of this thing? How, how do I find that? And you would be surprised how often something as very, very small as that has messed up students, you know, at the high school level. It happens all the time. So how do I find that width? Well, I have to be able to say, oh, sure, that makes sense. I've got a length of nine here, but this bit is three right? Because it's a rectangle. So this bit here must be six meters. And again, students should be encouraged to explore that. The first time a student gets this, their response may just be to give up, but it is better to, you know, kind of work it out. You know where that comes from. You know how the subtraction works. All of the tools are there. You just need to apply them. Um, so six by twelve is, or six by two is twelve. Twenty-one and twelve gives us thirty-three. Um, you could have also made a very large rectangle and subtracted, but I chose to do it this way. Thirty-three is the answer I got. Now we have a large rectangle with a small rectangle cut out of it. The large rectangle is 8 by 7, which is 56. The small rectangle is 2 by 3, which is 6. 56 minus 6 is 50 square centimeters. Two rectangles are joined together to form a single large area. They do not overlap. I like that they mentioned that little, that little bit. We have 10 by 2, which is 20 square meters. And hey, let's talk about square meters for a second. We know that a square meter is a square that is one meter on each side. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a, it's, it's a unit square for real life. It's one meter by one meter. But that's not the only way that we see meters squared. Much, much later, much later in uh, middle school, we're gonna start talking about meters squared like this. And a lot of students don't recognize that these mean the same thing. If I have meters times meters, just like if I have two times two is two squared, five times five is five squared, later on x times x is x squared, meters times meters is meters squared. And it means that in a both literal and mathematical standpoint. So when we talk about squaring numbers, I want to make sure that you know that we actually literally mean squaring numbers. Anyway, 
10 by 2 is 20, 2 by 6 is 12, so the total combined area is 22 square meters. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, no, 32. Ha, 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 going too fast. That's okay, I'll get it back in the quiz. Hey, it's the quiz. Let's get it back. So it looks to me like we've got um, four threes and four threes. Also, it could be three fours and three fours. Let's see, seven by four is 28. Four by nine is 36. 28 and 36. 36 and 30 is 66 minus two is 64. Here we have three fives and three fives to make six fives, which makes 15 plus 15, which is 30. And finally, we've got a seven by seven, which is 49, minus a three by three, which is nine. 49 minus nine is 40. And then finally, it looks like we've got seven twos and three twos. Or we could also call it two sevens and two threes. That is also correct. And that's quiz four. And yes, that did make up the point that I, I got wrong from last time. So that's the one thing about quizzes that's nice. If you miss one, you can always make it up on the quiz instead of having to go back and do the whole topic again. Not bad.